So I've started questioning why mental health is the only condition where to treat it the body part in question isn't looked at. The brain is powerful, but when we suffer with mental illness, it isn't looked at. Nine years ago, my dad was in a mental health unit. After a sudden depression and an attempted suicide, he was in a mental health unit. Whereas before this, I didn't know anything about mental health, neither did he, neither did my family. We didn't even know that this mental health unit close to our home existed. And I think back to that time, looking around at other patients, some were suffering with extreme anxiety, some were suffering with extreme depression, some had schizophrenia, eating disorders, and I now think to a time where my brother as well is in hospital suffering with a traumatic brain injury. And the comparisons between the patients in my brother's rehabilitation ward and the patients in the mental health unit is actually very scary. So there were patients in the mental health unit that were confused, that forgot things very easily, and they just seemed very disorientated. And at the same time, patients in my brother's ward who are suffering with brain injuries have the same symptoms. They're confused, they don't know where they are, they don't know how it happened, and more importantly as well, they're forgetting a lot of what they're doing. And a guy called Daniel Avery did a TED talk on exactly this. It was called The Most Important Lesson from 83,000 Brain Scans. And in it, he explains how every brain is different. Before imaging, I always felt like I was throwing darts in the dark at my patients and had hurt some of them, which horrified me. There is a reason that most psychiatric medications have black box warnings. Give them to the wrong person and you can precipitate a disaster. Early on, our imaging work taught us many important lessons, such as illnesses like ADHD, anxiety, depression, and addictions are not single or simple disorders in the brain, they all have multiple types. An example of this was two patients that were both suffering with depression. They both had very similar symptoms and of course they were being treated the same way. But after a brain scan from each patient, it showed that their brains were very different. One had very high activity on the brain, whereas the other had very low activity on the brain. Here are two patients who have been diagnosed with major depression that had virtually the same symptoms yet radically different brains. One had really low activity in the brain, the other one had really high activity. How would you ever know what to do for them unless you actually looked? Treatment needs to be tailored to individual brains, not clusters of symptoms. There's more examples in that TED talk, but it goes to show that minor damage to our brains could be linked to mental health. And it's surprising that when we go to see someone about how we feel, that they never bother to look at our brain. And it doesn't have to be a traumatic brain injury. It could be minor damage, such as concussion when you was younger, or even Alan Shearer, an ex-footballer, is now doing a lot of studies that are showing links to heading a football to dementia when you get older. I went into football knowing that at some stage and later in life, because of playing 15 or 20 years and training, that I would have problems with my knees and my ankle and my back, and I have. But never ever did I think that um, playing football could actually give me uh, a brain disease. A difficult thing for me was going and meeting these families who were having to live with dementia, and, it's, I've, and, and it, was a, it was a real eye-opener for me because I, think... I understand how difficult it is, not only for people who are living with it, but it's their family, how very, very Absolutely. difficult it and is. And I it's know that only too well. So um, um, you met his wife, uh, May. Yeah. Okay. May says she knows other footballing friends of his yeah. who she believes you know, all have dementia because of football. And she says that there's six or seven that are, uh, that are living in, in her area who he used to uh, who he used to play football with and May has to write the day, has to tell him where he lives, has to put him to bed, has to get him up and mm. it's an incredibly difficult disease to, uh, to live okay. with. So after doing all of this research myself, I started to think that I needed a brain scan myself because it goes to show that there could be a much bigger link 
between the brain or minor damage to the brain and mental health itself. Imagine breaking your leg and the doctor diagnosing your broken leg without giving it an x-ray. That's never going to happen. So why do we walk in to speak to an expert, speak to a doctor, a psychologist, a counselor, tell them how we feel and they guess, they never actually look at the part that they are treating. And again, I only started to really look into this, to research this after my brother's recent accident because the comparison was crazy. So I really wanna know your thoughts in the comments below. If you feel like this is an issue that needs to be addressed, then please do share this video. And I'm off to go and get my brain scanned.